Today's speaker is Kelly Reddy Best. Kelly is an associate professor in apparel, merchandising, and, <laughs> and design at Iowa State University and the curator and director of Iowa's textiles and clothing museum for ISU specifically. In her research, she examines the interrelationships of dress, identity, consumption, regulation, and the fashion system. All of her work is rooted in the social justice lens. She's taught courses across the apparel curriculum in design, product development, merchandising, culture, and history. Today, she'll be sharing her experience developing an open textbook for one of her courses and getting it Quality Matters certified. Kelly, take it away. Thank you, Abby. Yeah, thank you everybody for coming. Um, today, I'm going to talk about my course called AMD 165, Just Appearance and Diversity in US Society. And I um, am going to show you what the course um, used to look like and now what it looks like. And so I'm gonna just show you like the transformation process from um, some of the things that I used that I, that kind of, I feel like look kind of ugly or, um, you know, are just, uh, I look at them now and kind of cringe a little bit and, um, but you know, everything's a work in progress. And then, um, and then what I turned it into and I'll also share um, a lot of the resources um, that I use on campus. Um, and that was really important to developing these materials into what they are today. Um, and so while I am the instructor of this course and teach this course every semester, I um, I'm really, I leaned really heavily on a lot of folks across um, campus. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, share, I'm gonna just share my full um, screen for today. Um, and so I'm gonna just show you guys um, first um, what my course used to look like. So this is uh, spring 2020. Of course, this is the semester we all went online for COVID, but I, the course was online the whole semester. Um, and so I'm just gonna uh, show you a little bit about what my um, Canvas looks like. And then I'll show you some of the materials that I had loaded on. So this is the um, home page. Oh, let me pull up the uh, chat here just in case folks have uh, questions. Um, so this is this is the home page. Um, I had a, a welcoming video. Um, you know, I had things like highlighted in yellow. Um, I had my syllabus here um, and just some information, um, you know, about the course on the landing page and then um, information about myself and my um, my TAs. Um, the other uh, part that I want to go to is the modules. And so this is the thing that really shifted. And so I've um, opened up the sex and gender module. So let me go up to the top. So I had here originally, I had a module on a few important reminders. I had um, all the modules broken up by week here. And within the modules, it had the instructional materials and then the assessments. And so the students had to go into the modules on Canvas and click, right? This is the reading here. Um, this, you know, I have them read the academic dishonesty, uh, academic dishonesty policy because the first module is on honesty. And then they go through and they learn about the basics of dress, prints, and identity social science theories, social justice, culture, um, et cetera. And so I pull this one, um, the sex and gender unit, um, because specifically because of the amount of instructional materials that I had in this module. And um, I'm gonna just give you a comparison to what it looks like now. And I think it looks much better. Um, and so um, the instructional materials, the students were provided this um, list um, of gender terms and definitions. And so this course is a baseline course. So I assume they have, um, there's no prerequisites for this course. Um, so there's a lot of sometimes definitions that are provided. Um, and so there, these were, um, uh, to this is a PDF, um, and then there were these short videos, um, and because it's very visual in apparel merchandising and design, and, and other um, disciplines across campus too, um, I wanted the students to watch various um, videos um, discussing um, trans and gender nonconforming or non-binary or gender queer individuals. So they watched the video about tucking with the gaff, packers, how to bind. Um, there also was like a reading here. There was also a six minute video about coming out as not binary. I had loaded my PowerPoint slides. And so I pulled those PowerPoint slides so you could see them um, in just this, I'll pull them up in just a second. And then I had a short video on um, what it means to be two spirit. So there was a, you know, it, it wasn't, um, there were like short videos, um, PDFs, reading, a lot of materials, right? And it all related to my assessments. So I always had a quiz, a case study on this particular, 
unit, I had four discussion boards throughout the semester, and this particular unit had a discussion board. Oh, and then they had extra credit. <laughs> they could visit the museum because <laughs> I'm the museum director, so I stuck that in there too. Um, but so this is what my um, my PowerPoint looked like. You know, pretty standard PowerPoint. <laughs> and so it had introduced the module. It had headings. Um, you know, and I would. Um, I had loaded this, I had visuals um, of, you know, different things that we were talking about in class, and then it had um, a lot of other visuals too. And so the, the um, important point here is that, so in this unit, which I, I specifically use the, this unit as a demo, um, in this unit, um, I talk about the constructs of gender and how those have changed over time. And so I wanted to show like historical examples, like, yeah, like we now think about gender in different ways, you know, but in, in Egyptian times, masculine or men, you know, wore so, sort of like so-called uh, feminine leaning aesthetics. They wore um, bifurcated arm skirts, right? Um, and so we have evidence of this throughout time. Um, and so I'm really just demonstrating this um, through a very broad lens throughout history. Um, but um, none of these images that I was using in my PowerPoint were open source. <laughs> and so that's where Abby came into play and helped me a lot um, to sort of change this over. Um, and so um, the students also, um, the case study um, would just, I had the instructions in a Word document here. So everything was there in this course. Um, it just, um, it, it, you know, when you see the, the course and the way it looks now, um, it's, it's very much more um, reader friendly <laughs> or like user friendly. Um, so I'm going to pull up the um, course now. So um, last I did this, um, I uh, had this course certified. I, I forget the exact date, but I believe it was like February 2022. Um, of just in time for spring, the spring offering. And so I put the course, I worked on it all last semester um, to get it both approved by Quality Matters, which is um, the, it's a, um, a third party um, uh, organization that evaluates the course on multiple levels. And it's like a really extensive process um, to have your course evaluated. So there's to, there's three reviewers and then they um, they use a rubric and they evaluate your course on all kinds of things, alignment um, of the course. Um, uh, accessibility is also a really big um, item on the agenda. And so um, as I was doing that, as I was like redeveloping the course, um, Lesia, I was working with Lesia in Cell and she really, um, she offered this idea. She's like, why don't you just make a open source textbook? <laughs> and I was like, oh gosh, like that seems too much. <laughs> but um, once I realized like what it would look like and what it was, then I really was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. And Lesia really helped me. And then I reached out to Abby and I um, also worked with Jordan, who's in our college, who helped me a lot with some of the accessibility components of making the course meet both quality matters um, and have like a really engaging um, course. So um, this is what the course looks like now. Um, and it is um, fully, uh, it is approved by Quality Matters, and it is it it met the um, it meets like some of the highest standards of um, accessibility. And Jordan really helps me with that, um, and Abby uh, too. And so when you land on the homepage now, um, uh, it has these really nice orientations. It has the module. So I'm going to just go to um, the syllabus page because I think this really kind of demonstrates like the change from that that one link that was on the home page here. Um, so I'll go back over here. So this was where my syllabus was before, which is fine, you know, it worked. Um, and then um, it went to this format. So I do, I have all these call outs here. Um, and then I have the information also embedded in the course. Um, and so then there's also this, the link to the Dress Appearance and Diversity U.S. Society open source ebook. And so that is the part that is um, 
what I'll also be focusing on today, but it has, as I was, as I was like making the course meet the quality matters standards, it really made sense to me to, to just go the extra step at that point to, to make and develop the open source textbook because I had all of the information in all of the modules and it was a little difficult to, it was a lot for the students to like be clicking and opening and like keeping track of everything. So this was really about putting it in a nice cohesive space and then also making it open source, which I think is an important component, especially when you're teaching a justice oriented course, making it, accessible so the students don't have to buy anything and so that way anyone could read the book too. Um, so um, this is uh, this is part of quality matters um, you know having like a big picture so that way the students can really understand what goes into the what, what the course is about especially when it's um, all asynchronous online um, and then um, it just describes all of the items that are in the course. So I have um, discussion boards, case studies, a final um, exam, my like grading policy, uh, et cetera, um, and even like templates. This is a really high enrollment course. So there are 360 students in the course right now, and the cap in the fall is 500. So um, having things really streamlined is important, which also was a major um, motivator to, to develop the ebook because having it um, all in one place and really easy and accessible makes the course more engaging and I can like be ensure that the students that this like large mass of students are having a high engagement experience. Um, and so I'll just scroll here. So then I just have some of my um, you know policies down here. So I'm going to go now to the modules page here. Um, and so on this page, so I'll just kind of do like a compare and contrast. So before, you know, it's very similar, um, but it just has changed a tiny bit. So I have a module, I have an overview for each um, module, and then I have what they read and engage with, and then what they do and submit. So it's similar, but what I do here is I link right to the ebook. So, and um, you just click it and then um, here it is. So it will, um, within each chapter. Um, so this, is, I just link right to the chapters. This is chapter two, Dress Appearance and Identity uh, ebook. And so um, everything corresponds. So this is made directly for my course. Um, and so this is on um, Pressbooks. And Abby, if you wanna make a Pressbooks, um, Abby is amazing and awesome and really like helped me do this. Um, and so when you click here, you land on the introduction. Um, there is a, um, you know, I have my course level outcomes, my course level objectives, um, and then also module level objectives. Um, and then there's two parts to the book and these correspond directly to the modules that I have in my course. So module one is orientation and honesty, module two, et cetera. And so, also, when I when I did this, it really helped me like conceptualize like, OK, there are actually two parts to my course. So I didn't like have this before. Um, but when I was like reorganizing everything, it made sense. I was like, all right, the first part is dress theories and concepts. And then the second part, we really focus on marginalized communities and marginalized identities. Um, and so um, there's a drop down menu. Um, and again, Abby helped me format all of a lot of this. Um, some of it myself, but I would say I was heavily leaning on, on Abby there. Um, and um, you can click and, um, and it will bring you to the various um, headings. And so the other important thing here too is I have the case study. So everything's open access. So I just, my case studies are out there. My syllabus is out there. It's readily shared um, and open and available. So anyone could, could essentially draw from and, and use this content um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on um, sex and gender. Um, and so um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So um, in this, so again, um, uh, in the um, in the unit, so it always starts with module learning objectives. Um, and then I have the, the same, it's, so I'm gonna just give like, give you like a comparison here. <laughs> so I pretty much gave my PowerPoints to Abby and she helped me put it into this beautiful format. Um, and so it's really, it's like the same, right? It's like sex, intersex, gender, et cetera. 
Um, and then I um, also edited edited some of the content and it really helped me flesh out some of the content that wasn't really clear that was in my PowerPoints. Um, and so there's like call out boxes. Um, and so if you remember this terms and definitions, that was in a um, here, right? So it went from this space here to this here, right? In this, and it says required reading, right? So the students are guided to this um, ebook and everything, all the information, the content for the course is all housed in the um, in the ebook. Um, so um, let me just show. So basically, like all of this, all of the information. I'm just gonna make my, do a little parallel here, and so you can kind of see the the um, the comparison. So I have you know transgender and gender nonconforming. I have. Um, uh, you know, understanding um, trans people, um, understanding non-binary people, understanding trans people, right? So everything was just translated from from one to the other. But in this, really, like I, I think I think when Abby was helping me make this, I was like, wow, it looks so beautiful. So you know, as opposed to just clicking this and downloading it and having students like keep it on their desktop, everything's just like right here, so they can see it. Um, also, then we embedded the videos. So right, so we have coming out as non-binary. So it was that six minute video and it's here. And then in the open source textbook too, or ebook, um, this is where Jordan came into play and Jordan helped me caption every single video. Um, so it either, and I'll talk about, I have two YouTube channels too that I host that hold some um, videos uh, for the course that I've developed because there just weren't like videos that were good enough um, that like really met the course and module learning objectives. Um, but so in some instances, Jordan would um, put the captions on the video in in my YouTube channel. Um, or if that wasn't a possible, like if I don't own the video, then Jordan um, captioned it and then we put the, the transcript right here. Um, so that way it's um, meets that quality matters um, accessibility component. Um, and so, so I want to emphasize, I really could not have like done this in one semester without both Abby um, helping me build the press books, Jordan helping me like check all the accessibility, and then Lesia really was the person who was helping me, I'm going to just scroll up really quick, Lesia was really helping me the person with alignment, and so Lesia helped me um, really define my module learning objectives, and then when I changed it from here and I put it into the eBooks, I really was like, oh, I don't like need this because it doesn't meet the objective. So I had like this extra stuff that I was like, it's really cool and I think it's awesome and I really want the students to do it, but they're already getting it, right? So they already have that content in this other component of the course. So it really helped me like narrow down the course to like essential components that met the course learning objectives that then tie to module learning objectives. So I didn't have module learning objectives before I did this. I'll be very honest. Um, I, I did not have that. And then, but each chapter, each um, module has module learning objectives. And then each of these module learning objectives ties to the specific content and then it ties to the quiz and it ties to the assessment. So everything is like fully aligned. Um, and so it did take a lot of, um, it was, it was a lot of back and forth between Lesia and Saul, Abby, and then um, Jordan too. Um, and also I, I contacted people who are in my discipline and asked them to look at it, you know? Um, and then also my, um, my I had um, funding to have someone help me copy edit the, the press books. Um, so I had a professional copy editor um, go through and she did two rounds of edits um, and it was so that way the grammar and stuff was good. <laughs> so, um, and so I'll just keep scrolling down. So then we had the videos. Um, again, here's that two spirit video. So two spirit video explained and then here it is here. Um, the um, um, this, oh, this one wasn't here. This was in the, um, I think this was embedded in the, the PowerPoint or something. Um, and then this is um, something really cool. So um, this corresponds to, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint over here. So in the PowerPoint I had, when I would deliver this or when I used it online, um, 
I had, you know, I had this history, this like brief history part of like, I wanted to, the point was like, I wanted to demonstrate that gender, the constructs of gender and like how we express gender through bifurcated or unbifurcated garments like changed over time. And so I had all these examples. And so this is where Abby usually came into play and helped me um, find open source images. And then she built these really cool things. This is like the coolest. I feel like, like, look, ready? Right, just click on that. Oh, there it is. And then it has a little thing right there in the 12th century, you know, English men and women did not differ much, right? They both wore like dresses. <laughs> so, um, and then 16th century, you know, same kind of thing, 18th century, 19th century. Um, and there's like a little um, boys ensemble. So boys, you know, wore pink and dresses um, up until the 19th, until the 19th century. And then 20th century, you know, we found this image of like, you know, now we, I usually associate pink with girls and blue with boys. Um, and so it, it was getting at that same, so the learning objective was met. It, it, I just didn't need all those other pictures. I mean, those other pictures are really cool, but I, I, I it was satisfied through this um, new activity. Um, and then I'm gonna keep going down here. Again, more videos, a transcript, um, uh, example videos, um, how to make a gaff. Um, and then I have my references. And then each of the chapters has this um, this case study call out. So, um, and it has, this is where the students download the case, uh, the case study for their class. Um, and so that is kind of like where I went from this module to this, I don't know, I would say, I think it looks pretty good. Um, and, yeah, each chapter has that. So um, the other thing I'll just show you too really quickly is I have, when I, I host these two YouTube channels, Fashion and Justice Research Lab. Um, and then also we have a YouTube channel for the museum. And so these um, videos, I, I created these videos um, and I'll show you that in the religion unit. Um, and they, um, help to explain some of the concepts. And so the YouTube channel really um, is awesome because it, it I can really create the content that fits with the course. And so in the fashion and justice, I'm gonna go to the playlist here. Um, so we have this um, uh, playlist on dress, fashion and identity. And it's like different individuals talking about their different um, identities and dress. Uh, and so I just interview different folks about this sometimes. And, and they're really kind of like, they're not like super high quality videos. <laughs> they're just like on my iPhone or I have like a little video camera that I use sometimes. Um, but these I um, embed too in, in the, um, in the ebook. And so I'm going to go to the religion chapter here. So uh, so in religion, um, we talk about all different kinds of religions um, and um, again, just images and so forth. And so here's that embedded video about Muslim women's dress that's hosted um, on the Fashion and Justice um, Research Lab's um, YouTube channel. Um, and then Jewish um, dress, um, this is just a YouTube video. Um, and then this is the one that's hosted on the Textiles and Clothing Museum. So we created these cool object um, videos where it's like a, a Mennonite dress. Um, so Holden and Mennonites um, are, uh, and it, this was one that we just have in our collection on campus. And so we just made this like kind of cool, like little object video. So the students could, could see it, um, especially because it's like an online course. So for our in-person courses, we might come see the object, but this allows like a more in-depth like look and we look at the construction, we look underneath and, and things like that. So, um, so yeah. Um, and then again, here's that same uh, case study, case study call out. So I will, um, I'm gonna just stop, um, stop there. Does anybody have um, Questions, or I'll just I, I have a couple other things to show you guys. But any um, any questions or anything or thoughts? Um, Kelly, this is Ellen. Yeah. Hey. My question is: um, Are there people outside of Iowa State using this material? Um, I. That's a good question. So I'm going to. Um, 
gosh, did I present it? I'm going to present it at, um, uh, I presented it at a conference in, um, that was digital um, uh, at Drexel University. And so I am going to, yeah, share it, like for example, at our professional association, International Textile and Apparel Association. Um, and then I think that's probably the main one where it would go. Costume Society of America could also be one. Um, I can't remember if I submitted an abstract this year or, oh, you know what, I think I did. I We had a lot of abstracts going through this year, so I don't know if I did that yet, but that is the plan. Um, I did want it to, I think I might not have been totally, I think I wanted to, it wasn't copy edited yet, and I wanted to make sure I got the copy edit. I wanted to make sure it was like totally clean and, um, and ready to go before I, um, like shared it at our professional association, but I think that's where I would share it or, you know, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like ways and that maybe I, I need to circle back probably with like Abby, um, but ways to like share this, like po the possibility, because this course, uh, you know, uh, for folks who don't know, Ellen um, and I are in apparel merchandising and design, and this course is like taught at, a, a type of this course is taught almost in every apparel program across the United States. I would also, this is specifically to the U.S., so it doesn't have international perspective, but I mean, and there's, I don't know how many programs, a bazillion of them. So yeah, like people could, and that was the whole reason too, is like I wanted to be able to like share it so that way other folks could use it um, and not like have um, a copyright on my stuff. <laughs> so, but yeah, did that. Uh, that's helpful because yeah, I'm thinking, you know, the topic that we applied for similarly could be shared across many universities. So what particular advice do you have in preparing your OER materials so they can be useful to people? Yeah, I would um, think that, um, I think that having, so I'm gonna just move my chat around here really quick. Um, I think that the one thing that, we did, I think it's in the introduction. Um, it, I think that the thing that might be most helpful is really like, I don't know that, I mean, I think just making sure like, cause I was thinking about that um, as I was making this and I really, I mean, I made this because I didn't like the textbooks um, that, you know, I don't, they're just outdated. They're just, you know, especially with stuff like about this, like they're just not, um, you know, I mean, and it's not any fault to the authors. They just, you know, it just takes, you know, it's for the, the published, the profit publishers are just, you know, they take a long time. So this allows me to be really flexible um, and so I was using that textbook. So I was really familiar. I'm very familiar with the textbooks um, that are that people use for this course. In fact, I like have a chapter in one or something and I don't even use it because I don't like, I'm just like, I don't, this chapter is not that good, you know? Um, but I think putting this intro here and just being like, this was created for this course. This is my course description. Um, and then kind of like, this is how we use it. And I think at the end, and we have like, I have all the course level course objectives and then the module objectives. So people could just use these. I mean, and it's fine with me, like, um, and let me go scroll down to the bottom here, but there is one section, maybe Abby can help me, um, how to use this book. There's like, a, and this is Abby helped me create this, um, you know, how do you how to use the book and and this is where abby came into play really um because it's you know it's like this is the example case study chapter so it's everything's really clean and consistent so um and then gosh where is that other i thought i had one part where it was like let me see here i definitely have my syllabus on here too somewhere oh goodness content yeah. It's in the first chapter. You have your syllabus uh, linked. In the first chapter. Oh, yes. Nope. Thank you. <laughs> Look, where is that syllabus? Um, so if we go here, thank you. Thank you. Maybe I should yeah, um, <laughs> move that or something. Um, I guess it kind of makes sense. But um, but yeah, I just have like, 
the syllabus here. So I don't know. I think that um, probably that first page, though, you know, that intro, so that and just telling people that they can use it, because I think that, um, you know, especially because so many people copyright stuff and they're like, can I use this? And I'm like, yes, use it, you know, <laughs> like, because um, I don't think a lot of people know um, we have the attribution here. I think you can click on this. Um, well, you can't, I don't know. Abby knows. <laughs> like I gotcha. Abby. Yeah. We've got more information in the bottom. And one of the nice things about these is uh, what some instructors do is they'll have in the beginning information for students and information for instructors, or they might have a back matter page with links out to things like slide sets and additional information for instructors that want to use this in their course. Uh, what I shared in the chat is we do now that you've finished all your uh, copy editing work and the book is like in its final state, we do a promotional push for books published through the press so we can get it up on the open textbook library, which is an international repository and repertory for people to locate and adopt open textbooks where other instructors at universities can provide reviews for the books and look over them for their own courses. Uh, and we can also pull statistics on use of the book. So if say someone's linking it from their Blackboard account, we can see, oh, it looks like instructors at Drake University are using this in their course. Yeah, yeah, so Ellen, I think for your, you know, like some of the courses you teach, I mean, definitely, especially the courses that are like core courses in, in a lot of universities, you know, I think that's where this, you know, and, and I think too, like, you know, you probably know the textbooks that are, you know, that work or don't work or whatever it is, yeah. um, or you just need like um, additional components, you know, like videos of draping or something or, or, or the, whatever it is, like, so like, that's where like the multi components, like having the YouTube channel, you know, and then having this, so that way I could like have both and then just embed them, you know, and then, and it's cool, like people, um, you know, people like watch these videos. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, it's super cool. cool how you can put different types of materials together in the book. Yeah. E book, and it looks really professional. Yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah. I, this is, I'll show you my favorite one. I love this one, the fashion theories one. There you go, oh, here. The, the activity in this one is my favorite. Um, so, yeah, but this is where Abby helped me find you know, like these open source images. Cause I was like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, uh, and, and just like things to demonstrate the concept. And of course I was like, I want it to be justice focused. Like I want to center marginalized voices. Like I don't want to have all white appearing people in this book, you know, I want to like, so I was just communicating all these things. Um, and yeah, like this, you know, having this video, we found this cool picture of Lady Gaga, right? <laughs> so to make it like relevant for students. Um, but this one's one of the cool um, activities. And so we talk about classics and fads. <laughs> like, and so, okay, Ellen, is red lipstick a classic or a fad? Which one? Promoting classic. Classic. Okay. Go go boots. Oh, fad. Mm -hmm. Hammer pants. Oh, fad. Teased hairstyles. Totally classic. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, little black dress. Classic. classic. Chuck Taylors. Classic. Yeah, and so you hover, you see how you hover Fun. over and it tells you. Yeah. And then look, watch. Oh, you got it right. <laughs> so it's like a so, quiz, but not. Yeah. So it's a, um, it's a low stakes learning activity. So these are the kinds of things I would like do in my class, you know, and then we just transform them into this like little activity that they can do. Um, Cause I always had, um, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Oh, the, I'm, this one didn't have it, but obviously, cause this was online, but, or no, I did have them in there, but th for whatever reason, I just don't have one in here. Um, I, I used to have like little learning activities like listed in the PowerPoint, you know? and it just wasn't engaging you know it wasn't like that cool and then um so then Abby introduced me to these things um and uh yeah and so sometimes they're this um there's one like in the first chapter I'll show you there's a couple um or Abby can you write even another cool one um I think it's is in... there one in so social justice uh, or social science theories maybe yeah, I think there's one in social science series. So let's look here. So you go through, you go through. 
um, conformity. So we used to watch this video in class and now I just put it here. Um, oh, there's the Girl Scout uniform video. Um, so, oh yeah, this one, this one's the coolest. So they, um, this one we're talking about role identity. And so um, they watch this short little video on the Stanford prison experiment. And then um, we found this image and um, it's a little different, right? So um, you just click on it and it tells you um, about the connection between role identity and the prisoners and the guards, you know, the outfits, cause that's what we're talking about. We're talking about like dress and how like, um, so the structured seams, Oh, whoops, that should be S-E-A-M-S, sorry. <laughs> I should probably correct that. Um, on the shoulder, <laughs> provide a structured look, the geometric lines book a sense of power and authority. Um, I'll fix that later today. Well, you know, <laughs> copy editor didn't catch everything. But, um, and then the same thing on this one, they use, you know, just to highlight the connection between the way that they use dress. And you just click on it. And it's cool, it's like these little, little pop-up things. Um, oh, that's the Creative Commons license sunglasses and then probably this is the dress yeah non-bifurcated garments talking about like feminization and control so yeah yeah so that was another one and then sometimes they're just really easy they're little quick ones um i think in this one um there's like a, it's just like a true false or something um so let me just scroll down here oh yeah so um we talk about dress modifications to the body um, and so shaving an example of a dress object or a modification. So if you put objects and then you check it, it's like, oh, retry, and then you can retry it. And then it's like, oh, yeah, oh, you got it right. Oh, no, retry, is it dress modification? There it goes, okay, yep, you got it right. And then it tells you a little answer. <laughs> so cool. Any That's other- Really neat. Yeah, it's, and-, and yeah, I didn't know about any of these things. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I learned all of this. Um, and it, it was like kind of a little scary, but um, Abby was really, that's why like Abby and Lesia, um, they were all really helpful. The other, so I wasn't going to show you guys this document first, because this is the one that's kind of like, I, I would say it's a little overwhelming to look at um, if you've never made one of these. <laughs> but, um, but this is the thing that really guided me through quality matters and and then really helped guide me through narrowing and condensing down my materials and that's when when I was making this this is when Leslie I was like you should really make an ebook like I think that it will just help you streamline everything and you're already doing this anyway so uh, and this really convinced me so I narrowed down and um, Leslie uh, helped me um really um uh, edit my course learning objectives to what the students were doing um, to five. Um, and then they have a soft skills one. <laughs> so, um, so they have the course content objectives and then the soft skills objectives. And then, um, oh, and then I tied them because I knew I'd have to do this anyway. So I tied them to the new US diversity requirement outcomes because it, you know, that it'll get re-reviewed. So I, I just did this all at the same time. And so what I did was I have, okay, here's my module, here's the module learning objectives, here's the learning materials, and then the assessments that go with it. And so I mapped it all. Um and um to make sure that everything fit. And then I cut stuff because I was like, I don't like need this. <laughs> like, and it was really cool when I said that to Lesia. Lesia is like, yes, this is alignment. <laughs> like this is what this is what happens when you do alignment. So it was really cool to do this. And then so I did this for each each module. Um, and then I'll go down and show the other one that I did. I cross-checked it. So um uh, then I cross-checked it. So then I was like, okay, here's the outcome. Where is it being, is it being met? So then here's the module learning objective. Um, and then um, the module, the module and the module learning objective, right? Like do, it, are these all being, being met? Um, and so then I just, I cross-checked them. Um, and it, yeah, it was kind of like combing through everything. And that, um, and so this document, like it was, it took me, you know, I probably got through like one week, you know, cause I was like creating the content, 
creating, making sure the objectives were all aligned. Um, and it took me like probably the whole whole semester to to build all of this, to build this. And then I submitted it in, um, I don't know, like January, December or something. And then it was approved in February. And it was cool. You get like a score and you don't always pass, I mean, you, know, you don't always pass quality matters. Um, and Lesia has courses pass and sometimes don't pass. But I think because I was working with Abby and Jordan and Lesia so closely that I got a 98 out of 100. I was like, I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> so I felt like so because like, you know, Jordan helps me with the accessibility stuff and um, Abby helped me with ebook and Lesia helped me with alignment. So it all kind of like went together, you know, so. Um, any other like questions or thoughts? I haven't been watching the chat. Oh, has this? Oh, go ahead. No, Robin. I was just going to jump in and say, so are you, have you looked for OER created by other people to use in your other courses or have you even gone ahead and adopted any? I, in my other courses, no. Um, my other courses, so I teach uh, three other courses or four other courses and two of them are very, um, we're like the only university to really offer those courses. One's called Queer Fashion, um, Culture History in the Industry, and the other one's Black Lives Matter, Fashion Politics and Resistance Movements. And so um, those are pretty unique to Iowa State. So there like aren't other, I mean, there, I mean, I use, we we use published books <laughs> for those. <laughs> um, so the students buy, um, they read like, it's a higher level course so they, they read in that and then my I teach a um a graduate level theory course and so that one we're really just reading a lot of peer-reviewed articles things like that um so I I don't this is the only course that I and I teach those courses less often and so this course I offer every single semester in summer and now winter. And so that's, and because it's a high enrollment, it's, um, I didn't even know this, but it's one of the high, it's like the top third course taken for um, uh, US diversity um, designator. And I didn't know that. And then, um, and then when I, I found that out in the middle of when I was doing this and I was like, oh, cool. So it's like, you know, a lot of people take it. Um, and so I, I put a lot of a, a lot of effort. So my other courses do not look like this. Like th this one is like really is shining, but the other ones are like they look like kind of the old PowerPoint, you know. <laughs> like, no, no, like, no, no, no worries. Yeah. I just yeah, you know, just wondered. No, yeah, no, yeah. So there's no hurry. Is, you've you've obviously yeah. spent a huge chunk of time recently <laughs> yeah. on this, but at least yeah. now that you know what's going into this, you'd be open if someone were to create, someone else were to create an OER that might be yeah. useful to you? Because I know some faculty still kind of go, uh, yeah, who knows? A, yeah, it's, it was definitely a lot, but um, I mean, I've taught the course so many times. Like, I mean, it just, it runs, it, it runs all the time. So, um, and yeah, and like, and then once I realized, then when I found out it was one of the top enrolled courses for that, I was like, oh gosh, it's pretty good. You know, I kind of got like nervous. So like, I kind of felt like, you know, oh gosh, like some, some of the students, this is the only US diversity course they ever take. So I felt like, oh, they should, you know, it should be really, I want it to be really good. So that way, you know, they learn about people and stuff. So that was kind of a big motivator too. Um, I don't know, I think I've offered this like, I don't know, 17 times or something. It's a lot, so. But um, let me see, I don't know if there are any questions. Any other thoughts or questions about like anything I did? <laughs> I think most of the thoughts, at least from the comments are, this is great and you did a great job. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of did it and um, I didn't know what it was going to look like. And it just was like, well, we'll see how it looks. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is the first semester. After this semester, it'll be the first time it runs fully with the ebook and the Quality Matters um, um, uh, a certification. So yeah, I'm very... Um, I'm, I'm very interested to see what the student evaluations come out to be um, because I got the certification for the quality matters. I did this like 12, 
um, this summer, I don't know, this like before COVID, I did this online certification through QM and it was like this 12 week thing because um, I was just kind of interested. And so I implemented a lot of th those things I learned into the, my course that I showed you before. So that one was like kind of QME. Um, and the, it was interesting because the, the learning, my um, teaching scores went up. Like I could tell drat dramatically. Like I used to hover at like a, like a four, you know, and then it went up to like a four, 0.4 or something you know I would say for like U.S. diversity multi you know um across discipline you know everyone takes the course freshman to senior I was like that's pretty good like you know like, um and so I, I'd be interested to see what what the scores will be not that they them, they reflect everyone of course but um but um yeah it, it would be interesting to see what they come out to be um so yeah, we'll see. Maybe they hate it. Maybe they love it. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'll find out. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was that was um, yeah useful. Yeah, no, nothing. Oh, I yeah yeah that's really it. So yeah, but. Well, thank you for everybody for coming today. If you have any final comments, questions, or kudos for Kelly, let her know. Once again, I'm going to post in the chat the link to our cafe's website if you would like to suggest a topic or a speaker for another month coming up. Uh, next month is still in limbo. We'll see what the topic's going to be. <laughs> but it's been great having you, Kelly. And this is excellent information on the entire process you went through. Thanks, Abby. Yeah, thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for coming and, you know, learn about this. <laughs> so if you do anything cool too, just I'd love to learn about it. So cool. Thank you guys. <laughs>